Join us as we explore the reactions of five Karens who found themselves facing the consequences of their actions in a court of law. From entitlement to shock to complete denial, their reactions are sure to be eye-popping. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Lena Hernandez, a 54-year-old grandmother from Long Beach, California, made headlines for her verbal abuse and racial slurs towards a teenager and a Chinese man. Hernandez, who initially went into hiding after the incident, was later caught and charged with assault. During the incident, Hernandez targeted a teenage girl who was simply doing warm-up exercises on stairs, unleashing a barrage of racial slurs and abusive language towards her. Later, she directed smaller offensive comments towards a Chinese man, threatening him with death and making fun of his language. Police had a hard time tracking her down, but eventually she was arrested on a bench warrant and charged with assault. In court, she pleaded no contest and was sentenced to 45 days in jail as well as a year of anger management. On February 4, 2003, 18-year-old Penelope Soto found herself in court facing charges for possession of a controlled substance, Xanax bars. During her hearing, the judge asked her a series of questions about her employment, property ownership, and the value of her jewelry. However, when she made a joke about owning a lot of jewelry, the judge scolded her for being disrespectful and told her to take the proceedings seriously. Karen, the judge, then denied her request for a lawyer and asked if she had taken any drugs in the last 24 hours. Penelope responded flippantly, leading the judge to charge her a $10,000 fine. But Penelope didn't know when to stop and she made an offensive comment about the court. The judge called her back and sentenced her to 30 days in the county jail. Deborah and her daughter were out shopping when she made a bold decision to ignore the mask mandate in the store. Her Karen persona didn't seem to believe that the rules applied to her, and when a camera was pointed at her, she responded by coughing on it and threatening the camera person who was Heather Sprague, a cancer patient with a host of other health risks, making her even more vulnerable to the deadly pandemic. Heather saw Deborah's actions as a calculated attack on her weakest points, both physically and psychologically. The court couldn't take that kindly to Deborah's behavior and sentenced her to 30 days in jail. The consequences of her actions affected not just her, but her family as well, with her children facing constant embarrassment and mockery because of her mother's behavior. Maya Ponsetto, a 22-year-old woman, falsely accused a 14-year-old boy, Keon, of stealing her iPhone. She demanded that he show her his phone and even told him to take the case off, claiming that it was her phone. Despite Keon's denial, Ponsetto continued to harass him, even accusing him of being a thief. Her actions were caught on security footage and went viral, prompting Gail King to bring attention to the incident. Later, Ponsetto apologized for her behavior, stating that she could have handled the situation better. However, she also defended herself by claiming that she didn't believe her actions were racially motivated. She eventually managed to avoid jail time through a plea deal, but was sentenced to two years of probation. During a custody hearing between Amanda and her ex-husband, Ryan, the judge asked Amanda to undergo a drunk and psychiatric evaluation. However, Amanda responded with hostility and made several inappropriate comments. She filed a motion for a drunk screening and psychological exam. The judge asked her to follow Ms. Kimball to finish speaking before responding. Amanda objected to the drunk test and said she would fail for marijuana. The judge fined her $100 for contempt of court and scheduled another hearing. Amanda continued to speak over the judge and was sanctioned for three contempts. She also made a request for a deposition but later opted out after flipping off the judge. Meanwhile, poor Ryan had to deal with her behavior during the hearing. In conclusion, the five instances of Karen's getting karma in court serve as a reminder that actions have consequences. Whether it's refusing to wear a mask during a pandemic, making false accusations, or disrupting court proceedings, the Karens in these cases learn the hard way that their behavior won't be tolerated. So that about wraps up our video. If you enjoyed watching it, then please consider liking our video and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. Check out some of our other videos that you see on your screen right now and we'll catch you again next time.